Hello and welcome back. So today um, we're going to be talking about herbs. Yeah, herbs. What do you do with them? How do you propagate them? Where do they come from? A lot of questions to be answered. I've got this basket. It's a hanging basket. Yeah. And I've got quite a few herbs in there. It's my kitchen garden. It's my herb garden in a basket. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I want to share with you a few things that I know and maybe you can share with me also in the comments what you know about these herbs and what you do with them, um, how you use them around your home, how do you cook with them, you use them for fragrance or whatever things that you do with them. We can talk about them in the comments when I finish. So welcome. My name is Gladys Briggs and this is Diaspora Lifestyle and Garden Channel. Yes. So the first herb that we're going to be talking about is basil. Um, so fragrant and you know some of the smells uh, I find unpleasant like not unpleasant but overwhelming let me use that word yeah some of them are overwhelming for me or actually even not unpleasant but basil I love basil it's one of my favorite herbs of all time great in Italian cuisine and Nigerian cuisines and even as um, part of your juicing or smoothies stir fries um what else i don't know they're really good like you know seasoning um marinade anything anything like kitchen stuff yeah and how do you propagate um basil i started these off from seeds i have a, i had a pack of seeds during the christmas um sales i bought them and i just spread I sprinkled them in a pot in another pot a big pot and then um, when they all germinated and got to a certain height then I took some out of that pot and I made three pots out of that one so this is still growing and I could definitely still um, split these up if I want to so that they can look because they're quite leggy if you notice they're quite leggy so I could still split them up and make them like really robust big so yes that's basic for you but also you can propagate them from cuttings so i'll show you how to do that maybe i'll leave the link up there or i'll leave a little thing up there for you to see yeah you just take a cutting yeah and put it in water two three weeks you get the roots and once the roots come through you can then transplant them so you don't have to wait for the seeds so this can grow and grow and grow and make seeds and you can plant the seeds or you can just plant straight from the cuttings yeah so that's how you propagate them now this is thyme thyme <laughs> we use thyme a lot in um, nigerian cooking yeah so we use thyme in our stews we call them stew i think what we call stew is just like the curry like a nigerian curry really <laughs> it's fried um tomato paste tomato sauce tomato fried tomatoes <laughs> and and some peppers and maybe like a meat or fish or any of those things yeah so this is thyme and yeah um it's a, it's a mediterranean herb as well and one thing about thyme is that it doesn't like overwatering. and when i say mediterranean then the the habitat kind of is one that is not so wet a little bit dry and um not so cold as well it's not cold yeah mediterranean i think i've been to it's, it's not so cold and not so wet 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 so these plants don't like too much watering watering all the time so if you look at that now you will see the that is kind of rotting from the inside or from the bottom so and that is uh, due to watering so you want to make sure that you reduce the watering on that only give it water when it needs water so you can do the hand check your hands in and fill it if it comes out dry I think that needs water now yeah so how I you can prop propagate this from cutting and from seeds as well it makes lovely flowers I think the one in here has
see so that's thyme as well it's another variety but that's what the flowers look like they're really little little flowers even the foliage and the stem and everything is a really little herbaceous plant yeah now this is parsley i think i always mix it up with um coriander yeah i always mix them up but i think coriander is the one with the with the white leaves whereas parsley look like the little trees can you see it's like a little tree on its own yeah so, whereas, whereas coriander looks more like the leaves are bigger and yeah but this is parsley you can see how tiny the leaves are yeah so i always mix them up yeah both of them are kind of in the same way both coriander and parsley um, I mostly use them for juicing yeah I throw them in my smoothies or my juice if I want to get the grains because in Nigerian cuisine they are not so popular which is basically what I make in my home I mostly eat like uh, Nigerian food and a little bit of British food once in a while and maybe Sunday roasting uh, but that's not something that we have every Sunday in my house even so in my house it's mostly like my husband loves the stir fries so we do stir fries most evenings and maybe a little bit of carbohydrate added to that i'm the one that likes that loves the carbs so i like heavy carbs like gari like yams rice plantain stuff like that my husband is low on the carbs he likes a stir fry or a salad and a little bit of um carbs maybe a little bit of rice on the side of it for him not so much i grew up with heavy starch so yeah so parsley for me or coriander they are mostly for like juicing or smoothies or stir fries and um i would propagate them by dividing them so once you get this one from the shop what you have to do is just to divide them if you look in there you can see that it's got lots of babies joined up together so and if you split one out of those ones and put it into a different pot then you're going to have another one and it does keep on multiplying so really if you have one of these you don't even have to go back to the shop anymore to buy them you can also start them from the seeds they have the seeds in the shop as well yeah uh, now this is mint and um, it pretty much looks like the flower or the vegetable it's a vegetable the herb that we call scent leaf in Chang yeah it pretty much looks like i think egypt people say kenny yeah it pretty much looks like it i'm very sure they are from the same family and the flowers when they do come out when they do bloom they look very much like that town or um, scent leaf yeah so i think means you have to be very careful when you plant it because it goes wild but in Chamu doesn't do that certainly it doesn't do that anyways but this one means does it it goes everywhere so it's going to it's going to like you see I have a different one let me get that one Okay, do you see how this is growing? Yeah. <laughs> I never put them in the ground anywhere in my garden because like this will grow underneath on in the ground in the soil flat down and these nodes here will form roots and it will keep on going everywhere in your garden and forming roots and bringing offshoots everywhere. So in in a couple of months your garden all the other flowers or everything else will be gone it will be all mint left they're good plants but you have to try and contain them so i never put them in the ground in my garden or put them in with any other plants because they just overtake everybody else and suppress everybody else so it's usually mint on its own in a container of its own so i leave them there like i just wanted to show you the behavior of mint to show you how it's growing like it grows flat down like that it goes flat down and then sends roots to the ground and sends shoots up and keeps on going down and there are lots of plants that behave like this so you have to be familiar with them and to know them and to know whether you want to put them in your garden or not invasive plants yeah so mint is one of them but they're really lovely addition they are great as a them um, and as a companion 
plants so the weight of pests and things in the garden so it's worth having them maybe in a container somewhere in your garden so that they can do their job and they're also great um i'm not a fan of the taste or the smell of the taste i think i don't have a problem with the taste i think it's the smell i'm not a fan of the smell of the mint so if i'm having ice cream I'm never gonna have a minty flavored one but i think i have them in my garden mostly for the pest control and sometimes for juicing yeah the flowers are beautiful they do like a, a lovely they look like the salvias i think i have salvias somewhere so i'll show you what they look like hang on a minute so the flowers do look something like this yeah so yeah so that's that's mint for you what have I told you about? I've told you about so many different herbs. Goodness me. Yeah, so you can propagate mint by um, cuttings. Just take the cuttings or plant them from the seed. Yeah, and they do grow really quickly, really, you know, very, they spread very fast. So you can take the leaves, you can take the, you can take a nice cutting like that, just underneath that node there. And then you put it in water and leave it for a couple of days, weeks and it grows really quickly in a week you will see like some roots coming through and then you can then once you see the roots you can plant it if you don't if you want to put it directly in soil you can maybe sometimes use the help of some rooting hormone it works yeah i've used it and it does work so the rooting hormone sometimes helps to encourage the growth of the roots quickly so that the plant can establish quickly the other thing that i have in my hair basket here is sage that's this one this one right here see and this one is the variegated leaf one. It smells really good. I've never used it before. <laughs> to be honest with you, I haven't used it before in eating, in my cooking. But I do use it when I'm like freshening my house. So like if I'm cleaning, I can put a little bit of sage along with lemons and just let that sit on the hob and boil and steam uh, like the my oven or i use it for cleaning so when i finish cleaning the whole house smells so good yeah so that's what i do with that's what i mostly do with sage people say they use it for ice cream and use it for other things but mostly for me it's a combination of sage and lemon sometimes sage and rosemary rosemary and sometimes rosemary and lemon i just put it on and leave it on the hob with hot with water to just keep on boiling when i'm cleaning and that will just steam up the whole windows and everything else so as i'm cleaning it gets rid of the grease and grime easily and the smell of fish or anything that is in my home now guess what i almost forgot the rosemary yeah i'd like to take one nice stick and i'll take it out and we can go talk about it yeah this is just one that i've had it's been in this pot for forever and people say that it needs to grow in full sunlight but it's just been in this pot here behind it doesn't even get full sunshine <laughs> and it's just been there surviving so yeah there you have it rosemary yeah, let's go talk about rosemary um so with rosemary i use it for um roast potatoes so good like <laughs> it's so good for roast potatoes and sometimes even um you know when you make like um roast beef like you use it to do the finishing and all the flavors go into the beef when you put it in the oven and lock it in and finish it off with the with the rosemary yeah so that's what i do with it and uh, to propagate it i don't know whether i've seen the seeds before but it makes lovely flowers and um i usually propagate it from from cuttings that's how i propagate it and you've got this at the top here is the soft the soft um wood yeah and and here you got the hard wood down here see it's very hard you don't want that part you want the part that is in between okay so the semi one the one that is in between hard and soft so that's the part that you want to take the cutting from let's say somewhere here 
and you can put that directly in a pot with soil with compost and a little bit of rooting hormone and that will grow or you can just throw that into a bottle of water and leave that for a couple of days for the roots to come through and when they come through then you transplant it and that will be it yes done oh my goodness i've been talking for how many hours so those are all the herbs that i that you would normally find in my garden and i think the only thing i didn't talk to you about is dill that's the only thing that i didn't talk to you about and chives which is like part of the flowers in my garden chives grows everywhere in my garden so well when i'm talking about my flowers i'll talk about them alongside yeah so yeah that's how i propagate most of them and that's what i use them for and um yeah i hope you learned a thing or two i enjoyed sharing that with you i shall see you in the next one looking forward bye for now bye on our community tab we do a feedback on all the lovely plants um both horticultural and vegetables that are in the backyards in the diaspora gardens uh so if you haven't yet subscribed that's enough reason to subscribe because if you're not subscribed you won't be getting um access to the community content um also we love to have a reaction from you would love to hear from you engage in the community engage in the discussions and when you finish give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down it's important because it lets us know um, whether you like the video or whether you didn't like the video and also it's good for the algorithm so be a part of our success thank you for watching see you in the next one bye